this question I wanted to include because it's come up at least three or four times in like in recent history. I think it's, it's just one of those problems that bugs people. <laughs> so I figured I, I could see it being a little bit surprising the first time you see it, but I, I hope it, it'll make sense in a few minutes. So um, also the reason I want to bring it up is because we have these habits and patterns. I want you to notice this when you're studying where you start reading a problem and as you're processing the information, you're already thinking, oh yeah, I've seen something like this before because uh, that's how we learn. We we're good at matching patterns and we don't want to re recreate the wheel. So we've seen something before we're going to do what we know. We're going to get to the answer. So as you get more experience with, with solving problems, you want to kind of pause yourself and say, okay, I think I've seen something before, but I'm prepared for something here to be new or different, or maybe I haven't seen everything, or maybe something is a little bit nuanced here. I want you to always kind of have your, your radar up looking for the, not to say that they're trying to trick you, uh, but there may be something that's fundamentally different than every other composite wall heat transfer problem that you've seen in recent history. And I'm sure you've seen a few. So uh, let's read through this one. A wood stud wall has bat insulation between the wall studs. The total resistance value for the insulated portion of the wall is 21 and a half. And the value for the studded portion is 9.7. The studs, plates, and headers occupy 18% of the wall area, assuming parallel heat flow. The average total resistance for the wall is most nearly what? Okay, the key words to this one is assuming only parallel heat flow. And we'll come back to that, but let's read the question. Even though the values given are R, they calculate U based on a weighted average of 18%, 82%, and then take the reciprocal and calculate R. Why does U need to be calculated first and then take the reciprocal to get R total? And the answer is B. Well, the short answer is it's parallel heat flow, not series heat flow. But let's actually take a look at what that means. So we're very used to seeing these side, side sections of the wall, right? Where you have like, I don't know, you got some uh, bricks and then you got some insulation and then you've got some sheetrock and the heat is going to pass through those three layers a b and c and we can represent that as um oh and then you have the film coefficient on the outside and um you know the long and short of it is you can represent that as a bunch of series resistances which can be directly added so the total resistance for this type of situation is the resistance of A plus the resistance of B plus the resistance of C because they're all in series. And then you can use that total resistance to, to solve uh, the overall heat transfer. But in this case, instead of showing a side section of the wall, I'm gonna just show the front section of the wall. So now we're looking at it straight on and we have uh, these studs along the way. And cumulatively, these studs make up 18% of the wall area. And then the insulation is the space between that makes up the balance, which is 82% of the wall area. And we know the resistance values for the studs. And we know the resistance value for the insulated area. But we cannot add them linearly. Why is that? Well, the heat doesn't go through them in order from A to B to C it goes through one or the other. The heat can go through the studs or it can go through the insulated area. Now you might say, well, there's a lot more insulated area, so it's more likely to go through that, but that area is insulated, which is why we build walls the way we do. Um, the studs is a lot smaller area, uh, but maybe it's easier to get through. I mean, wood is a pretty good insulating material, but maybe they're metal studs, I don't know. I didn't even look at the values. I just kind of want to talk principles here. So the, the spirit of that is we cannot add the resistances in series. What we can say 
let, let's model it. So see, we modeled this as resistances in series. Now we would model it a little differently. Now we would say we have the resistance of the insulation and the resistance of the studs and they're in parallel. So how do we add resistances in parallel? The total now, you have to take one over the sum of the reciprocal. And I guess the thing about that is the units have to work out. So if you just did one over and added them, you would have units, uh, you'd have inverse units to what you need. So in order for the final result to have resistance units, these are gonna be reciprocal and then reciprocal again. So they're gonna end up in the numerator and you're gonna get the right kind of units. Um, Another way to think about it, which I think is equally valid and potentially more intuitive, is to think about the corresponding coefficient of heat transfer for each of these resistances. We often talk about, like the whole goal of this or what we do with the composite walls, we work toward having this total resistance. And when we finally get it, we say, okay, then the overall heat transfer coefficient U is one over the total resistance. And that's absolutely true. And that'll still be true here if we calculate the total resistance this way. Um, but what I'm offering as just a, another way to think about it is, hey, why don't we think about these as um, heat transfer coefficients, not overall, but individually? Why not define U overall, uh, sorry, not overall, U for, the insulation only as being the reciprocal of one over the resistance for the insulation. That's certainly true, right? And then there could be a, a heat transfer coefficient for the studs, which would be the reciprocal of the resistance for the studs. And then these would have units of uh, that the coefficient of heat transfer normally has. And then we can add them linearly. Then we can add them directly because in the same manner that resistances add in series, resistance, this is a resistance to heat flow. This is how you can think of it as it encourages heat flow. It's a capacity to transmit heat. And when you have two things going on in parallel, you're offering additional paths. So they help each other. So that's why these can be added linearly. So U overall could be said to be U for the insulation plus U for the studs. Now, neither is better than the other. They both lead to the same result. They're mathematically equivalent. I just kind of like thinking about it that way because thinking about things in parallel and having to do a lot of reciprocals is like, are you gonna memorize this formula? Maybe you will, and if you're comfortable with electrical, like you've done a lot of that stuff in the background, then you might look at this and say, oh yeah, resistors in, in parallel, resistors in series, it all kind of connects back. Um, but for me, I like to remember resistances in series add linearly and um, the heat transfer coefficient is going to add linearly when it's in parallel. So hopefully that doesn't add, uh, add confusion and, and just kind of gives you another way to think about it. I try to hit things from different angles and um, sometimes that makes it messier before it makes it better, but um, it also hones your judgment. So when you see problems that, like we said before, have something new or a little bit nuanced, you'll be on the lookout for it.